black and white negative. Even though I had the day off, I drove to work Thursday. I arrived just after 9 a.m. and rolled the used mongoose I'd hauled from the trash dumpster to my house a week before back to the shop because I needed to utilize tools I just don't have at home. Tools like a propane torch. The bike's bottom bracket, that's the guts and bearings between your feet that allow the crank to spin when you push on the pedals, was rusted in place to a point beyond the means of my meager garage workshop. I needed BTUs to break those cups free, and after multiple attempts with a propane torch, proper tools, and technique, I successfully dis- and then reassembled the rough-hewn Mongo's hotshot bottom bracket with fresh grease and fresh bearings. Note. Fire is fine on thick steel frames, but can set a carbon fiber flyer on fire. Don't do it. Mission accomplished. I put the low cast cast off on my bike rack and headed home. Remembering that I was low on gas, that's petrol for those of you who don't speak American, I pulled into the BP station on the corner of Maynard and Kildare Farm Roads and navigated the crowded and ill-conceived station's pump layout, slowly and carefully threading my small Toyota Corolla needle to the eye of two filling station islands that can accommodate eight cars simultaneously if the drivers work together and pull forward at the pump. Desiring to be a compliant climate change consumer, I pulled all the way forward on the side closest to the station proper where I encountered a vintage sedan in the throes of Jim Gymkhana. Not knowing if he was coming or going, I watched as the car negotiated the tight squeeze with lack of ease in multiple turns and then saw a young man lead out of the driver's side and gestured that he was trying to use the pump to which I had just advanced. Sign. I check my rearview mirror, see that all is clear behind, and back up one space to allow the other driver access to a pump. I exit my car, and the black and white negative image of my son climbs out of the one in front of me. Tall, slender, sporting two feet long dreads with a short beard and black skin, he is the compliment to my son who is tall, slender, short-haired, sports a one foot long russet colored beard, and is white. The man smiles, waves, and politely thanks me for accommodating him. Of course, I respond with a jovial tone, adding, I only did it because I like your hair. Jealous, as I reference my thinning and mostly gray hair. He smiles, waves again, and goes inside to pay cash to the attendant as I type in my mother's maiden name, social security number, and solve the riddle of the Sphinx, thanks, Oedipus, in order to fill up using my credit card. He returns, starts to fill his tank, looks my way, and again voices his appreciation for my tiny good deed before nodding in my car and asking, You ride bikes a lot? I hesitate a moment as I consider my audience. As someone who used to ride 5,000 plus miles every year, but who now gets to maybe 4,000, I'm not sure of my answer, but reply, I do, but not as much as when I was your age. That's cool, he says, opening his rear left side door and pulling out a long board skateboard. I use this. Ha! I bark. Well, wear your damn helmet, Sean, referencing the sun that he reminds me of. The man's head jerks back, his eyes narrow, and his lips purse in response to it. Sorry, you remind me of my son, Sean, that's all. Oh, he declares as he laughs out loud. That freaked me out. My name is Rush Sean. Got it. I read minds, you know. You 28 years old? Close. 29. My Sean is 28. He has a longboard. Looks a lot like you. Nice, he replies as he screws his gas cap back on. You have a good one. You too, Rashawn. Nice chatting. And it was.